for me to have classes at 5.30. Okay, uh, so... Uh, okay. Uh, okay, okay. Sorry, I... Okay, somebody have been recording, eh? Okay, so... Um, usual hours for classes, 5.30 to 7. Um, but inshallah, we... That is what have been uh, allocated to us due to few issues. For example, like uh, we also not sure uh, why suddenly we have more numbers of students this time taking part five and so on. So finally, uh, we have decided not we have lah. Basically, the department have decided that, that it should be done on the basis of lecture like this. Okay, uh, and because we want to accommodate all of you, uh, that's why the time hours is from 5.30 to 7. Okay, so inshallah this will be the first class. I'm uh, basically taking over from Dr. Fatima. Okay, I hope you have basically discussed the first part of this course more toward understanding the theoretical aspect with regards to accounting theory. Uh, more on the issue like conceptual framework, a bit of history, uh, a bit of regulation. Okay, so more on the theoretical aspect with regards to accounting. Um, for my case, um, not many topics actually uh, for the second half, uh, but we would just would like to focus on certain issues. Okay, uh, more on emerging issues. Okay, uh, what is basically happening now in terms of financial accounting and reporting? What are among the recent development in financial accounting and reporting? And we also uh, choose two topics, uh, additional topics from the standard. I think two, three. Okay, three topics from the standard, which uh, we think uh, is quite useful due to the recent development. Uh, with regards to the promulgation of accounting rules and regulations. Okay, so if you, if you have uh, any question, uh, you can just raise your hand. Okay, uh, if you have, you can stop me if you have any questions. Okay, so um, I will basically handle the second half. As I said, not many topics. Um, inshallah, today to start off, we will just discuss some aspect of emerging issues okay uh, so uh, emerging issues uh, in accounting i will basically classify them into three uh, the first issue which i would like to discuss today is basically on the issue of sustainability reporting so uh, this is one issue which is highly uh, discussed or debated by uh, scholars okay, and those who have an interest in accounting. Uh, second, I will talk about some emerging issues in financial ac accounting and reporting for non-profit organization. Uh, so that's second. And I think the last one, I will just try to portray some issues of an accounting and reporting in Islamic financial institutions. Okay, uh, In Islamic financial institution. So, um, uh, that is three aspects of emerging issues. Okay. Uh, then I think on the topics of interim uh, financial reporting is basically a short topic. I also not sure why uh, it has been required by Hale to do three. It's a very short topic and also not too difficult uh, to basically understand. I would basically just require you to read yourself. Uh, inshallah, I will basically provide it, um, some additional, um, maybe I just recorded uh, 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 videos on this because it's a very short topic. Okay, it's a very short topic. Uh, so I will leave you with that on interim uh, financial reporting. Uh, then the last two topic is the topic which is very important okay, for your final exam particularly with regards to the uh, calculation question. Uh, it is on employees' benefit. 
uh, our focus is actually on employees benefit is on post employment benefit okay post employment benefit how would you do a recording okay recognition and how would you recognize and measure uh, post employment benefit uh, particularly you, there are two categories of post employment benefit uh, so uh, one uh, one categories uh, which is defined contribution plan would not be so complicated uh, but the one which is a bit complicated and sometimes might be a bit confusing is when employment is basically classified under defined benefit plan okay so that is where uh, it become a bit confusing and a bit complicated okay uh, I will basically allocate more time on this topic. Okay, I also have planned to give you like one uh, comprehensive question for you to do. Uh, to do uh, might be one classes. Um, just try to do a uh, few question or one comprehensive question on post employment benefit together with the next topic, which is on revenue recognition. Okay. So the focus of the calculation question will come from these two topics, uh, from employees benefit and from revenue recognition. I think you already have a groups. You have a groups. Do you have a groups? Yes, yes, sir. Okay. Okay. So for these two, you need to do a bit more of exercise uh, to be able to prepare for you for your final exam. Uh, that's one. Uh, the other one is to get a better understanding with regards to the issues of employees' benefit uh, and also revenue recognitions. Okay, so that is actually the topic which we will cover. Alhamdulillah, not many. Okay, uh, but the issue of post employment and revenue recognition, particularly with regard to the issue of material rights, uh, sometimes very confusing. Okay, so. Uh, Inshallah, final exam two calculation question will come from here, one each. Uh, and then I will have one concept, uh, conceptual or uh, uh, discussion on emerging issues. And inshallah, one more question come from Dr. Fatima on the first part of discussion uh, when you have, uh, which you have completed in the first six weeks. Okay. So that is basically what we are planning. Uh, I will basically advise you further, um, advise you further when the time be uh, closer, when the time becomes closer to uh, the final exam. Okay. So first class, I also try to set the tone for a discussion. Okay. So I will start with the emerging issues. Or oh, do you have any question? I will not have uh, uh, any ad additional assignment. I might be giving you uh, two comprehensive questions, one on employees' benefit for you to do in one of the classes, and another one comprehensive question uh, on the issues of revenue recognition in one other classes. Okay, so you will do specifically in those classes. Inshallah, I will basically be there also. So if you have any question, you can just ask me straight away. Uh, that is the only uh, exercise or assignment which I will basically giving you. Uh, the others, it will be your final exam. Okay. Um, anything you would like to ask? Is that clear? So we have uh, four topics. But of course, when you talk about emerging issues, I'll be talking from three different subtopics. Uh, one is on non-profit. Second is on sustainability. Uh, and then the last one is on Islamic financial institutions. Do you have any uh, anything? When is your midterm? Have you done your midterm with Dr. Fatima? Done. Yes, yes, yes. yes. Done. Yes. Okay. 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 So inshallah today uh, might not be too long also. Okay. Uh, actually, not much um, issues okay, uh, to discuss, uh, but inshallah, we will put more time on uh, employees' benefit 
and also revenue recognition. Okay, can we start on sustainability reporting? This is I consider this uh, this coming from chapter thirteen, if I'm not mistaken, from your file three textbook. Okay, from your file three textbook. Uh, this is basically chapter come from the discussion, if I'm not mistaken, chapter 12 and chapter 13. Okay. Can we start with sustainability reporting? Yes, sir. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, have you heard? I think you should have heard about sustainability reporting. Okay. You should. Okay. I think most of you are fourth year. Most of you fourth year student? Yes. You yes, should have yes, basically. Yes. Huh? Third year? Or most of you in the final year? Third year. Third and final year. Lah. I think you should have basically, you should have come across discussion with regards to um, discussion with regards to sustainability reporting. So let me just uh, share you this, the slide which I have. Okay. Uh, wait, where is... Mm. Where's my slide? Uh, this, how do I get my slide? Anybody can help me? Why I don't get my slide? Where was the slide? Where was that? Ni. 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 Cepat. Tadi dia. Ni. Ni kan? Pasti. Tak ada. Did you click the share content? Share content. Next Where? to the mic. Uh, on top, on the right of your screen. Yeah, I. You already click on it. Click on that, but the file is not here. Um, mana? Screen mana? Huh? Screen. Screen mana? Ni. Ni. Yeah, done, done, Jun. Done, sir. Done. Can see, sir. We can see the yeah. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I'm asking my son. <laughs> uh, very difficult. Okay, so you can see now? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. Yes, okay. Yes, sir. So, uh, we start yes. with sustainability reporting. Um, be my first question. Uh, without looking for the next few more slides. I think you should have heard about this word of sustainability reporting. Anybody can give an idea what is this sustainability reporting mean as what you understood at the moment? What do you understand by sustainability reporting? Is sustainability reporting come from integrated reporting? Have you heard about integrated reporting? No. Have you heard about no, integrated? Sir. No, sir. Uh, no. Never, I haven't heard about it. You have you never heard? Uh okay, but I'm not so sure how far have you been exposed because this is among the recent uh, this is among the recent 
uh, concepts which has been discussed by scholars or even accounting related bodies okay about sustainability reporting if you have not heard about sustainability reporting might be some of you might have heard about integrated reporting okay so to some scholars sustainability uh, sustainability sustainability reporting might be an explicit okay output which have been derived okay, due to the concept of integrated reportings okay i think if you look into the literature in financial accounting and reporting more and more articles have highlighted the importance of non-financial information okay the importance of non-financial information if you look into what uh, scholars in accounting have discussed in the past might be their focus is very much on uh, the financial information so whenever you talk okay whenever you talk about preparing for example like financial statement i think the main focus is to concentrate okay uh, on the financial information related to the activities uh, of the entities or of the uh, companies okay might be that might be true okay traditionally where the, the focus is basically very much on uh, the numbers okay or the financial aspects which we got to the activities of the companies that's why i'm not sure whether you have discussed with dr fatima for example one basic accounting postulate or assumption is monetary postulate because we always try to understand that accounting information is usually be reported in terms of financial information. However, of course, uh, lately the development, you can see many articles now have basically highlighted the importance of non-financial uh, non financial, or sometimes we call narrative, okay, narrative information. Sometimes maybe we try to differentiate between quantitative, which is more financial, uh, compared to qualitative, okay? And, and all these two uh, categories of information basically complement each other in order to enhance the quality of the financial statement prepared by an organization, okay? By an organization or by an entity, okay? So uh, when we have this term integrated, yeah, integrated, okay, we already know that traditionally uh, accounting has always focused to financial. So whenever we say integrating, uh, we are integrating non-financial information together uh, with the financial information in order to improve the quality of information uh, provided in the financial statement prepared by an entity. Okay, so sustainability reporting uh, can be seen as one of the consequence when we talk about integrated reporting because uh, it highlight also the importance uh, of non-financial information. Okay, because we, re we really understand uh, in order for company to sustain, okay, uh, to sustain, which means to uh, ensure that they are still uh, uh, they are still, what is the other word? Still sustain, which means that they, they still maintain okay? uh, their activities. They are not failed or kicked out from the environment. In order to sustain in their business activities, they need to also look into other aspects rather than just purely toward their uh, profit maximization or just purely about their business activity so in order to sustain companies cannot only focus purely on their uh, business activity which is highly motivated by profit maximization principle that is what traditionally okay uh, traditionally have been seen as the main principle when companies is basically been established they are trying to maximize their uh, their profit of course uh, in today's environment, for you to be able to sustain, it's not just purely about undertaking your business activities. You also need to look into some other aspects, okay, which have been highlighted uh, in sustainability framework, 
uh, I think in Malaysia also we embrace the sustainability framework as what has been adopted by uh, Bursa Malaysia. Okay, so we are embracing okay uh, all these other aspects which is important to ensure company can sustain in their environment. You might also have heard about corporate social reporting. Okay, you might also have heard about corporate social reporting. Uh, but corporate, how we differentiate between corporate social reporting uh, and sustainability reporting is as in sustainability reporting, of course, there is also a social aspect. But the way we look into the social aspect, we highly integrating it, okay? highly integrating it within the activities of the company. Okay. But when you look into corporate social reporting, there might be as if okay, separation between business activities and social activities. If I want to use a simple analogy, for example, company might say they have addressed social concern by allocating 5% of their profit to the society. That's still not good enough to be able to sustain. Okay, So let's say if company uh, make certain allocation, 5% of its profit will be given back to the society. Uh, that is just corporate social reporting. Okay. Okay. You are just reporting about, you are giving 5% 5, 5 of the shares of your profit to the society. That is still not yet good enough in order for a company to basically sustain in the environment because you really need to integrate it together with all the other activities undertaken by the uh, by the companies. So that is generally what we can say about sustainability reporting. Okay, so that is what I have just explained to you uh, earlier before I'm moving to this slide. Okay, so it is a holistic approach combining okay, various aspects on the activities of the companies. So that's why uh, there are many other terms, okay, like corporate responsibility, okay, sustainability development, ESG is economic, social, and governance, CSR is corporate social reporting, or triple bottom line, okay. Uh, they are basically try to serve a, a common purposes. But the latest uh, definition or the latest term which have been used is sustainability reporting. You are basically integrating various aspects okay, uh, of a company's operations. Okay? <clears throat> so this is what uh, I have just explained. Although you might say it helps consider aspect of social, but uh, when we talk about sustainability, it is a much more stronger okay, concepts where you are trying to ensure survival, okay? Survival of the business organization into their future operations, okay? Into their future operation in much, and it is much more integrated rather than um, a separate concepts between social and uh, social and profit, uh, profit issues or social or economics issues, okay? Okay, so this is uh, the aspect, the framework which has been embraced by Bursa Malaysia. So the framework of sustainability is basically comprising of three parts, economics, environment, and social. And of course, when you look into the literature with regard to sustainability, some scholar might have added one more. Uh, which is governance, okay? One, uh, some other scholar might have added one more in terms of different aspects of sustainability, which is the issue of governance. But the one which has been embraced by Bursa Malaysia uh, is economics, environment, and also social, okay? So when we talk about the first aspect, which is economics, okay? Economics. Uh, this is 
sometimes we might have some misconception. When we talk about the economics, we, we are not talking about the economics of the company. Okay? We are not talking about the economics of the company because if you are talking about the economics of the company, you might say issues of profitability. Okay? It is not about economics of the company. It is economics of your stakeholders. Okay? For example, one of your main stakeholders in the company if your work is your workers or your employees. So how you have tried to ensure that the economics of your employees have been addressed well or you have basically managed well the economics of your employees. So this is what we mean okay, by economics. We are not talking about the economics of the entity itself. We are talking about the economics of the stakeholders and we might be talking about the economic system at a much more macro perspective. Okay, a much more macro perspective. We are not looking micro. We are looking at the macro perspective. That is where you can basically sustain. Because you are not only concerned about your profit, very micro oriented, very firm oriented, but you are looking to a much more macro perspective and you are talking about the economics of your stakeholders. Okay, so you might be talking about okay, how your procurement practices of the company, how do you select the best talent, for example, and how you keep the talent within your organization, how you have made investment in order to develop the community is not about your side. Okay? It's not about the company itself. You are talking about economic at the macro level. Uh, this is, if you have addressed that, then you might be able to basically be survive in the environment. Okay. Second is your concern about environment. Of course, when you're talking about environment, impact of your company's activities toward the living and non-living thing. Okay? Uh, for example, like land, air, okay? uh, water and so on. So that's why if you, if you look into the recent development, you have uh, one a few new concepts of accounting like carbon accounting. Okay? how you basically manage the impact of your operation or activities toward the uh, carbon uh, levels, okay? Uh, levels in the environment. You have another term like water accounting. How do you account it? Uh, whether you have mixed some, uh, uh, what is the word? Pencemaran. Uh, what is the English word? Uh, what is the English word for pencemaran? Pollution. Okay, the pollution. Okay, so you okay. need to account. Okay, you need to account that how much is your pollution level and what have you done? How you basically try to, uh, how how you have basically tried to reduce the level of carbon emission, for example. What have you done? Okay, uh, in trying to uh, to reduce that level because you are basically concerned to living and also non-living things, okay, in the environment, okay. Uh, so that, if you have been able to do that, okay, that, inshallah, okay, inshallah, you will be able to survive, okay, to survive, the company will be able to survive. The last one is, of course, the social aspect, okay, companies uh, have basically impact toward the social system, so that's why one of the theory which is important to be said here when you talk about sustainability reporting, there are two main theories. Usually when you look into accounting literature okay, about sustainability reporting, you cannot run away with two important theories. One is the stakeholder theory uh, because your activities impact your stakeholders. Uh, no stakeholders is basically have a priority over the others. All the stakeholders concerned need to be addressed. The other one is what we call legitimacy theory. 
Okay. Legitimacy theories is more about social license. Of course, when you want to uh, do business activities, you need to uh, basically um, register your company. And then you need to get the license. This is more of a legal license. But in order for the company to survive, concept of social license is also important because society must approve your existence. Okay? If society disapprove, then you can basically become a failure. Okay? You cannot survive in the environment. So that's why you need to maintain good relationship with the communities, the employees, and all the other stakeholders. Just remember, this is two important theory in sustainability. One is stakeholders theory. The other one is uh, legitimacy theory. If you look into the traditional agency theory in accounting, the most important stakeholders is the capital provider. Okay, is the capital providers, uh, and usually the capital comes from the uh, from the investors or from the owner. But in stakeholders theory, all the stakeholders, okay, uh, in addition to the capital provider, they are all have concern, and all their concern must be address okay must be addressed so what is the benefit okay of this sustainability framework okay key benefit for incorporating sustainability principle in the activities of the company what is among the benefit of incorporating sustainability from the framework is give six key benefits okay from incorporating sustainability principle enhance risk management promoting innovation okay attract uh, innovation and attracting new customer maintain a license to operate a license here mean a social license okay a license here mean a social license securing capital so now investors who want to Provide capital to company will not just purely look into your profit figures. They will look into some other aspect okay, of your activities before uh, before approving or providing capital to your companies. Improve productivity and cost optimization. And last but not least is enhancing brand value and reputation. In the next few more slides, I will just explain a bit more of the six key benefit of incorporating sustainability principles. And I will just share uh, some real cases of company who have reaping all this benefit because of their concern on sustainability principles. Okay. So we go one by one. The first one is enhancing risk management. Okay. So, of course, companies' operation, they are exposed to sustainability-related re uh, risks like floods okay, arising from extreme weathers. I think uh, this is a good example because now we are in this situation where the weather is sometimes too extreme. I think the last few weeks, we have heavy rains, we have floods, and we understand if we have not addressed from the beginning about this possibility, uh, you might have basically, uh, I will not be able to sustain if you have not put uh, uh, a clear concern about some of this possibility of risk. Okay, so that's one. I think floods is basically a very good example. I think even, I think within these few more months, we are expecting some extremes weather, okay? So we need to basically be careful. And of course, this can affect the company's operation. Or another example is like strikes arising from unsafe working condition. This is more on the safety of your employees. If you have not put a proper concern, okay, on the safety condition of their employees, if this strikes, if, if this strikes, it can have a big implication to the company's operation. I think uh, in the Western, you can see a lot of example, okay? Uh, employees strikes, okay? 
sometimes those lorry who transport vegetables okay uh, i think when i was studying in uh, uk there are some workers from petroleum company also do strikes at that time even uh, even us private users of patrol you might have difficulty because you cannot get patrol because the driver for the lorry tanker uh, will does not want to bring the petroleum to the petrol station and the implication of this is very huge if you have not uh, if you have not done uh, proper uh, strategies in order to address this concern I think uh, the other issue here is about water accounting, how you ensure that your operation does not disturb okay, the quality of the water to the public. Okay? So you need to basically uh, address all this possibility uh, of event which can, uh, which can basically affect the company's operation. I think the case study here is a true case in 2011 uh, when Thailand suffered severe flooding the worst in the half of a century uh, that has bring disruption to the supply of part to the automobile makers like Toyota, Honda and Nissan because to these uh, Japanese uh, car manufacturers they have basically made Thailand as their manufacturing hubs okay so because of the because of the severe flooding parts cannot reach get the plants in Thailand and the uh, big car manufacturer from Japan suffers severe losses, okay? Severe losses. I think what I have been reported is more than US dollar 500 million a month for all these three companies. This is just an example. If you have not put a concern on some of the possibility of this, uh, then it will affect, okay? The sustainability position of the companies. Second, promoting innovation and attracting new customer. Okay, so if a company can give um, uh, uh, a good consideration on sustainability, organization can recognize opportunities and would have the capacity to innovate. Okay, uh, the growth through new product innovation. <coughs> through new product innovation. I think this is what uh, uh, General Electric, okay, General Electric is an electric company from US because they are the first one to reap the opportunities in trying to innovate new type of electrical products. Yeah, electrical products. Uh, what the concept which have the, they have name is basically ecomigenity Ecomagination. Uh, I also don't know from what word. Okay, uh, so this is the concept which they have used in trying to innovate new product. Okay, new product, and this new product is basically using green and clean technology. Okay, so since they are the one who first tried to innovate, uh, it have basically. General Electric have basically uh, reaped a huge benefits from innovating new concept of electrical products. Okay, so because they are putting concern on okay having a green technology, having a clean technology, they have basically reaped the benefits. Okay, so for example, among the figures we have been quoted, there is. For the period of 2005 until 2014, their revenue generated is US dollar 200 billion, okay, which is four times, okay, the general electric overall growth, and they have basically able to reduce 31 percent, okay, in gas em uh, emission and 42 percent reduction in fresh water use, okay. So this is uh, a real example again, what have been when uh, General Electric put a concern okay, on the issues of sustainability, okay, like the environment, it basically have reaped huge potential, uh, huge benefits. 
Maintaining a license, uh, as I said, maintaining a license to operate, the one which we try to focus is the license here is a social license. I think I have basically explained the social license is a community approval. Uh, this comes from legitimacy theory, one of the important theory in sustainability. Yeah. So companies who have basically uh, advanced, recognize the importance of social license, they will be able to survive. Okay, they will be able to survive. They will be able to basically reap more benefit by their concern on the social license to operate. Okay, good. True example again here. Have you heard about Tata Company? Have you heard about Tata Company? Yes. Tata. Yes. Tata. Yes. Kalau, if you yes. look more, uh, you have heard, correct? You have heard. Yes. If you look into, if you have not know about Tata, just look to many of the lorries in Malaysia. Okay. Uh, many of the lorries in Malaysia might come from Tata brand. Okay. Tata is an Indian company. If you I want to uh, to know the recipe or uh, the principle which I made Tata successful and survive is because of their concern on the community commitment. Okay, in India. Okay, in India. Okay, so if you look into the slide, they have done a lot in community commitment or community community investment. Okay. okay? So through their concern on the community, that's why they are so successful. Okay, they have installed sanitation, clean water sources to the town. They have built school, hospital, and so on. Okay, so these have basically bring elevate. Okay, Tata to be one of the uh, important. Um, Tata is more on uh, big vehicles, huh? and uh, not the car, more on trucks, lorries, okay? They have uh, buses, okay? They have basically been able to uh, to survive. They also have put uh, serious concern toward their employees. So they do have strike, their operation is smooth, and all these bring successful stories to Tata, okay? Securing capital, as we say, is one of the other key benefits if company would like to get an additional capital. And uh, now investors would not only look into your profitability or financial performance. They will also look into some other aspects of your company's operation. For example, evaluating the environment, the social and governance factors alongside financial indicators. Okay. Uh, good examples again here, okay. Uh, this is just one example. In 2015, Norway's pension fund. Uh, pension fund is uh, one possibility of uh, organization or institution which can make big investment because they are managing the pension fund, okay. So like KWSP, okay, for example, uh, in Malaysia, we have KWSP. They have huge fund, okay, because company is basically contributing uh, to their employees, and they uh, remit it into KWSP to manage the fund. So they have a huge fund, and they can basically decide where to uh, where to invest. So in 2015, as an example, Norway Pension Fund, okay, have basically uh, divest, take out take out their money from mining or burning of coal company because they say this is not a good company in terms of its effects toward the environment. Okay, they take out their fund from companies who might have a, a, a severe implication or negative implication toward the environment. So this is uh, just one example. Okay, so if now, if you are if you are a company thinking of sec securing additional capital, okay, investors or potential investors might not just be looking toward 
your profitability figures. They may also be evaluate, evaluating your other aspects like environment, social, and governance. Okay. Improve productivities, <coughs> reduce costs. Okay. So again, when you put an effort towards sustainability, okay, such as here an example is you have employee engagement program or health and safety program, okay, go beyond basic compliance with, uh, with regard to the labor or employee standard, okay, company can expect to improve its attractiveness to recruit and retain top talent, okay, and enhance employee and supplier profitability okay so if you put a concern to the health and safety of your employees more go beyond the basic put in more extra okay extra principles or strategies toward all this it can lead toward uh, cost efficiencies and an examples of case study which is used here is uh, this is a malaysian example okay this is a Malaysian example. I think most of you would know Sam Dhabi. Yeah? Sam Dhabi, one of its wing is basically Sam Dhabi Plantation. Yeah? Sam Dhabi Plantation. So Sam Dhabi Plantation have huge plantation, particularly like palm oil. Okay? Palm oil, but we know that uh, the treatments, okay? the plant which treating palm oil, they might basically um pollute the environment which the methane and carbon dioxide yeah and this for example could contribute to global farming so sandabi have introduced what they call uh, i'm not sure uh, what how they pronounce it but it is p o m e okay p o m e palm oil meal effluence okay the treatment this form Okay, okay, uh, has been used. Okay, there are certain strategies where, if you look and read it, okay, how to basically implement this uh, carbon reduction strategy. Okay, so they use, uh, they try to reduce the carbon, and then capture this methane gas in fifteen percent, and then use it back. Okay, use by capturing the met, uh, they capture the methane gases. And they can use that again, okay, in trying to uh, provide the the energy toward their plants, okay, toward their plants, okay. So uh, then they also have used this pomi, okay, together with uh, empty fruit branches to produce compost, okay. So this can be repurposed as an inorganic soil fertilizer. So all this have been introduced by Sam Dhabi and it has resulted in the cost reduction and investment revenue generation for Sam Dhabi. So this is just some example to show how company uh, who have addressed concern about sustainability aspect have been basically reaping the benefit from their sustainability strategies. Okay. Last but not least is about brand value, okay, enhancing brand value and reputation, okay. Uh, uh, brand value and reputation can create value by generating demand and securing futures earning. Okay, uh, uh, issues such as sourcing of raw material, energy and water usage, human rights are increasing, uh, influencing the company's operation. Okay, stakeholders also see companies who have uh, who have uh, make a focus to address uh, this concern of sustainability. Uh, stakeholder will basically view them more positively. Okay, a good examples here is Nike. I'm not sure Nike, Nike, whatever. Nike. I think I think most of you also know. Okay. But actually, Nike in 1990s suffer severe, suffer severely, okay, because they have um, some. I'm not saying it's bad, lah, okay. Uh, some 
uh, labor practices which is not favorable okay okay and the media have basically um, spreading this unfavorable news against them okay for example like low wages poor working condition and use of child labor okay so of course in 1990s this is bad for nike okay but they have been able to basically counter back okay so they are, they don't they don't just uh don't do nothing uh, because of that they try to look again what have been wrong and they have tried to counter back this by increasing minimum wage rates okay introducing principle with regard to minimum age okay perform audits of their factories globally working and uh, working with ngo okay to actively monitor the factories after a few years in 2005 then nike become the first in its sector to publish a report on wages and working condition in their factories and continue a commitment on all these strategies okay so this is how uh, an example of a company uh, managing the social issue which is affecting its operation okay and are able to rebuild okay rebuild their brand and reputation so this is uh, among the main issue okay so i just try to provide a brief summary of the sustainability framework then uh, and this sustainability framework is the framework which I've been embraced in Bursa, Malaysia. Okay, any questions you would like to ask? Any questions? Uh, any question? Uh, uh, I heard something. Any questions? No question. From you? No question. So far clear. No so far clear? So far clear? Yes, sir. So far clear? Okay. Yes, sir. Yes. Clear. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So, yes, sir. so, I think I plan this only. Okay, but can I know, uh, are you also in my zakat class? Yes, no. sir. Ma yes, many of you. Yes, sir. No, sir. No. <laughs> uh, because I'm expecting uh, many of you might also come from my zakat classes. Okay? Because if you are coming from my zakat classes, the next issue or the next recent development uh, which I want or the next emerging issues as what has been title okay emerging issues in financial accounting and reporting is basically uh, issues of financial accounting and reporting in non-profit organization okay in non-profit organization because so far if you look uh, i think you also have understood that in malaysia okay in malaysia uh uh, the the authorities which um, manage or control issue of accounting rules and regulation is MASB or Malaysian Accounting Standard Board. Okay, Malaysian Accounting Standard Board. There are only two rules. Okay, there are only two accounting rules which has been approved by MASB. What are the two accounting standards approved by MASB? What are the two standards approved by MSB to be used in Malaysia? Uh, FRS. MFRS? MFRS? IFRS. IFRS. Uh, wait, wait, wait. Uh, first, if MFRS, okay. Second? MFRS. IASB. IASB? What are the two accounting standards approved by MASB in Malaysia? MFRS, correct. MFRS, correct. What are the other one? Empers. Uh, Empers. The other one is Empers. Okay. The other one is Empers. 
Okay. MFRS come from IFRS. Okay. So if you uh, understand carefully, or maybe Dr. Fatima have also addressed this, in Malaysia, we use, um, I think I would rather use the word adopt, which means that uh, in Malaysia, we adopt 100% IFRS, which means that we are, we are not modifying any principles in IFRS. In Malaysia, MASP adopt 100%, okay? So when you use in Malaysia, we call MFRS. We change the I with an M, okay? From international, it becomes Malaysia. A good example of our neighbor, Indonesia. Indonesia is not adopting. Indonesia is adapting, okay? So you have two different words, eh? adopt versus adapt. Okay. Adapt mean that you still re refer to IFRS, but you could have modified, which means that you might not uh, take it 100% as it is. So Indonesia is adapting, Malaysia is adopting. Okay. So that is the first standard approved by MASB, uh, which is MFRS. Uh, the second one is just what uh, the sisters have just said. It is AMPERS, Malaysian uh, Private Entity Reporting Standards. And that comes from IFRS for SMEs. Okay? That comes from IFRS for small and medium enterprises. The only loopholes here is both standards are for profit-oriented companies. Okay? Both standards are for profit-oriented company, whether it is MFRS or AMPERS. Uh, the, the focus is basically for profit-oriented companies. For government agencies, they have basically tried to adopt IPSAS, the International Public Sector Accounting Standard. If you are taking public sector accounting, you will basically discussing about IPSAS in Malaysia, we uh, again changed international to uh, Malaysia. So we call IPSAS AMPERS, okay? Malaysian Public Sector Accounting Standard. So now, how about institution uh, which have been established, but it is not for profit oriented, okay? For, it's not for profit oriented, it's not for profit, it is a non profit institution it is a non-profit organization does a non-profit organization need to prepare financial statement what's your view do a non-profit organization prepare financial statement yes 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 yes, yes. 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 okay yes. they also manage uh, they also manage a fund correct Okay, that's why I'm asking uh, whether many of you come from my Zakat class because one good example is uh, what we have discussed is in Malaysia, the Zakat Authority is a State Islamic Religious Council. So do State Islamic Religious Council uh, prepare financial statement because they are managing the Zakat Fund, they are managing the Waka Fund, they are also also managing the vital month so do, do they, they prepare financial statement yes they do okay they did prepare financial statement but the issue is when they prepare the financial statement what standard they are basically being using okay what standard they are using in preparing the financial statement any idea what standard they are using in preparing the financial statement are they using hey. Uh, what standard they are using? Uh, AAOEC. AUF. 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 AUF for Islamic Bank. They are not Islamic Bank. They are managing Zakat Fund, Wakaf Fund, dengan Baitul Mal Fund. Uh, yeah, ni lah. Uh, this is the issue. Okay. This is the issue. Okay. Uh, so I will stop here. <laughs> I will stop here. So just think a bit more of this issue. 
Uh, then next class, I will be talking about accounting, uh, financial accounting and reporting issue for non-profit organization such as uh, such as State Islamic Religious Council. And I also will be talking about some latest development uh, issues again in Islamic Bank, okay? Islamic financial institution, particularly for Islamic Bank. I will basically just try to use uh, the contract of, of leases or ijarah uh, to basically uh, illustrate. Uh, standard on leases is basically going through a lot of um, current changes, okay? a lot of development and changes in their uh, standard. So inshallah, uh, next class, I will basically be focusing, uh, focusing on a uh, non-profit organization, uh, what are the issues of financial accounting and reporting, and also Islamic financial institution. I will just be using uh, leases as my example for Islamic uh, bank, okay? So I think that should be enough to start off our discussion for today, okay? So I will just stop here. Uh, any uh, further question you would like to ask me? Any further question you would like to ask me or any issues you would like to ask? Any problem with regards to the sound? You can hear me talking? Any problem? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Can, eh? okay. okay, so inshallah I will, uh, I have basically uploaded two uh, files of slides on Google Classroom. I will basically upload more. I will basically upload more to give you more uh, reference, okay, for, for our discussions. Okay. Okay. Uh, any any further issues? So, inshallah, we continue oh. on Wednesday. Inshallah, we continue on Wednesday. As I said, I will give more times on two topics, on employees benefit and also revenue recognitions. Everybody fine? Hopefully, yes, yeah. Sir. Yes. So, inshallah, yes, sir. inshallah, we meet again okay, sir, okay. on Wednesday. Okay, okay, okay. Fine, fine, fine. <laughs> okay, inshallah, we meet again on Wednesday. Okay? So, thank you very much. I end my class today by Assalamualaikum Warahmatullahi Ta'ala Wabarakatuh. Thank you, sir. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you.